Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you how I made this wire wrapped spider. So we're going to take you through the process of making the bead as well as doing all of the wire wrapping. This is the full length version of this tutorial so buckle in y'all, let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and today we are making a bead for making into a spitter butt. So I'm just starting off with a mandrel that I've dipped in uh, Dip and Go Sludge Ultra. There will be links to everything down in the video description. And I just want to get this heated up. And I'm going to preface all of this with I have not formally trained in lampwork glass. I've never taken any classes or anything. So if you see that I'm doing something incorrectly, um, please, please, please let me know because y'all's knowledge helps me to learn. So I'm getting that heated up and I'm coming in with, uh, it's an orange. I don't know exactly which one. I will have that listed down in the video description as well. I do not have my rods preheated or pre-annealed or anything like that. I'm just coming in, heating it up. Now this is a soft glass. It's a 104 COE and I'm getting about a pea sized segment. And let's see if I can focus for a sec. And we're gonna touch it to the mandrel and then start rotating. Now I'm going to recommend the videos by Janie Cox and a couple of other ladies down in the video description as well who I really enjoy their videos and they've been very very helpful to me and they know what they're doing way more than I do so go check them out. And I'm just building a little bit of a disc up in this opaque orange and you could do this with whatever colors that you like but it's that time of year where it's all autumn tones and pumpkin spice so I'm really feeling oranges and I'm trying to make sure I don't have any low spots in the glass and so just coming through now rotating and heating this in the flame You can see it's all lopsided and weird. I'm going to hope that using gravity and the heat of the torch to melt the glass will help even that out. Okay, I'm going to change hands. Just coming around. <clears throat> And sometimes when it's just not working out, I'll make it super soupy and start rotating around and this helps me to get my bead more evened out. Sometimes. Sometimes it just makes it worse, but you know, we'll figure it out as we go. And whenever I get the bead to where it's looking pretty even. I'm going to let it cool near the flame and you can see how it becomes less glowy as it cools. It's still quite hot. Cool is a relative term here. <clears throat> but we are going to start coming through and I've pulled some stringer previously. We have covered that in other videos. Um, but it's just the same glass that's pulled down to a thinner diameter. And I'm going to heat some up and I'm going to... Oops, set a dot and I'm keeping my bead below and off to the side of the flame because I don't want to melt the dots in just yet. I want to get them all applied and then we'll melt them in evenly. There we are. And now before melting them in, Ooh, I was going to do that with a dark topaz. Well, I've changed my mind. I'm going to use the light topaz here, and I want to encase each of these white beads, like uh, white dots that we've done. It's the crafting equivalent of rubbing your tummy and patting your head, keeping the bead rotating in the flame because I don't want to overheat it, but also keeping it warm and getting my rod up to molten. And we're just going to encase that because I really don't want the little dots to be soupy. I want my bead pretty cool. That way the 
molten glass that I'm applying doesn't distort the little dot bead inside of it. It can make for some really cool effects, but that's not what I'm going for right now. So I just heat this up, glob. There we go, just encasing it. Ooh, that wasn't very good, but that's okay. Because I wanted to get the glass touching it, ooh, like that one there. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'll point it out um, what, after the bead's been annealed and cooled and we clean it up to wire wrap it. I'll show you what I mean if I remember to. This is further proof that you do not have to be good at what you're doing to have a really good time. So don't let the pursuit for perfection get in the way of you enjoying learning a new craft. And we've just melted those in, keeping the mandrel turning. I don't want to overheat my bead too much. I'm swapping hands again. And as it cools, you may be able to see how those dots have come out. Now my strategy for making it look a little bit more like I know what I'm doing is to just add more layers. So here we go with another layer. I'm gonna come through and right here, do a little dot. Do a little dot, make a little bead, craft tonight. If you'd like to see us make beads live, be sure to check us out Saturdays, typically, on Kick. Links will be down in the video description. We stream typically Saturdays uh, noon to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, though sometimes things will come up and we'll stream on Sundays instead. But you can see an up-to-date version of our schedule of events and like streams and stuff at our website, factorcreations.com. Make a little bead. Uh-oh. I'm going to move on to a different bit of stringer. I always like to have, well, I tend to like to have my stringer prepared before I make the beads. That's not always the case, but it's my goal. And you can hear our Z-Dog upstairs just having a fit. He's a good boy. And I want to give a shout out to my beautiful husband who is helping me do the camera work today. Thank you, Randy. Okay, so now we have those dots and I am going to go ahead and melt those in. Boop, boop, boop. Again, it can be a little lumpy and weird looking, and that's okay. And I'm just taking note as I'm turning it of spots that have a little wider there up at the top, a little narrower there now. And so on this next step, that's going to really help me to um, know where to add more glass. And so that's cool now. I'm going to be adding some more of our pale topaz. And these are translucent. I love using an alternation of opaque and translucent colors in my beads, just because it's so pretty. And so now we're going to go boop. And I have a little easier time encasing a dot whenever the dot's already been melted in. Because I can make full contact to the bead with our encasing color. the other side and there's no rush in this if you find yourself making your own bead don't feel like you have to you know be time efficient or perfect or anything like that it's so much fun just to be doing and this is a self pep talk more than anything too so but I figure if I need to hear it maybe the other crafters need to hear it too So now that we have those encased, I'm just rotating the mandrel, getting them melted in just a bit. Well, I should say just a bit at a time. I don't want to make the whole thing molten and lose the layers in between. Though that is always my contingency plan, that if I goober the whole thing up, 
I just turn it into something called a gravity bead, which hopefully we won't need to do that. But if, if worse comes to worse, it's not the worst way of salvaging a bead, especially when they're super lopsided like this one. But I actually really like the lopsided beads for the spider butts. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to do some more dots just down the center line. So I'm letting my bead cool. Heating up a little blob, putting it on. There we are. Trying to hit the center of where previous beads were. Or previous dots. But I'm also... This side's a little scant, so I'm gonna get wild with it and add in some extra dots just because. There we go. Rotating this. I'm gonna come through with, this is a dark topaz, and I'm going to do some dark topaz dots in the centers of our pale topaz that has already been melted out. Sometimes I'll get so focused in one part of what I'm doing that I won't notice that I'm melting my bead. Hey, honey. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can go ahead and pause. All right. You ready? Okay. Alrighty, guys. So now that we have the dark topaz dots added around the edges, I am going to go ahead and melt all of this in. And then I'm going to do one more layer of dots, just because I really do love dots, y'all. Just letting that really soak in. There we go. And I'm going to go through on the white dots that we just added down the center. And I'm going to focus on the side that's towards me, because it's still a little more narrow. the side that I'm going to add be a little heavy handed to the topaz. Boop, there's a gloop. Just blobbing those on there. Oh, I guess that's supposed to be the light topaz and then do a small dot of dark topaz on top of it. Oh well, this is not what we planned, but this is what's happening. It'll still be a beautiful beat, I'm sure. And if not, I've at least had fun making it. So, there we go. And so, I'm gonna do, oh, I can't help myself, I'm gonna do another layer. But it's just gonna be on these center beads, or dots. smooth. Again, I don't want to distort the core at all or anything like that. And actually with the spider butts, I'll show you on this one whenever we wrap it, I really love them being lopsided. Like this is probably my favorite utilization of lopsided beads. Okay. I can't tell where I added the dots. Okay. Um, so doing just a little boop, dot of white. There we go. And they are not very centered, but that's okay. There we are. I'm gonna melt those in. everything good and heated and then letting it soak in and level out and as the 
why it starts to show back up on the surface. I'm going to come through now with our light topaz and just do a little spot. And then you'll have heard it clicking this whole time. That is my bead kiln that I anneal the beads in. And so I'm going to be soaking this in the kiln for about an hour at 970 degrees Fahrenheit because a book told me to. So hopefully I'm not messing that part up. But it keeps the beads from, it lets them cool at a, an even rate consistently. And then just melting those in just a little more. I'm gonna change hands because my left hand's tired. <laughs> It's a nice color. Let's go ahead. I'm going to show it to you in the camera real quick, babe. So that is how that is looking. You know what? We'll look at it after it's <laughs> And then I'm just going to set it in. Ooh, it's hot in there. Um, boom. Done. I'll see you all over at the wire wrapping desk. Thank you so much, honey. Alrighty, so now that the bead is annealed and cooled, I've selected a six millimeter red agate bead, not red agate, yeah, red agate, though carnelian would work out pretty well also, and I just wanted to complement the colors, but you do you and choose whichever beads that you like. The wire that I'm going to be using today um, is 22 gauge in antique copper. Um, you could use 24 gauge as well, and the colors of the wire are not important, but I do highly recommend um, Parawire because they're enameled craft wire, and this isn't sponsored or anything. I've just been using their products for years and absolutely love them. You don't have to worry about it tarnishing or turning your skin green, so it's really great for like low maintenance uh, jewelry. So we'll be using the 22 gauge and that's going to be for the base of the spider. I'm using an 18 gauge in silver plated silver um, for the uh, core wires. And then for my weaving wire, I'm using 28 gauge in antique copper. And all the tools and materials will be down in the uh, video description. And that includes the pliers as well. So I'm using my nylon jaws. That's just for uh, straightening out any kinks out of my wire. Flat nose. I like my bent nose just because it gets where um, I otherwise can't reach. Some good wire snips and my mandrel pliers. So we're going to start by rolling off about oh, an arm span. And that's more than what we need. Um, but I prefer to give ourselves a little bit extra. So this is about five feet of wire of the 22 gauge. Now on our prototype piece that we had made, um, I wanna make the neck of the spider. These are not the correct biological terms, but we got the booty bead and we have the head bead. And then, so this is like the neck right in this area. And I, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit longer on this one, but whenever we get to that point, you know, I'll just show you. So I'm going to pick our bead and I'm going to thread the wire through and bring the ends together so that our bead is at more or less the center of our wire. And now this is where this part will become the neck. And normally I just do like one twist and then get into the next part. I'm going to do like Ooh, just two, because I'm probably going to end up doing it the exact same way, but I just wanted to give a little bit more space um, for that neck to be happening. But I love these lamprey glass beads for spider butts. Just that nice, like, donut shape that you could use all different sorts of shapes and sizes of beads. I'm going to be using the 8mm mandrel 
on, or barrel on my mandrel pliers for my six millimeter bead. If I were doing a four millimeter bead, I would use the six millimeter. And you know, if I were using an eight millimeter, I think I would actually bump it up to the 10. Though I don't know, you could try it. I would just worry about it being too tight. And so I'm just going to grab here and we are going to shape around and bringing that wire around the bottom and then around the top. There we go. And this is a little bit of cumbersome wire and the tight work surfaces. I've got a couple of tripods going. But now that we've done those two loops around, and I like to give it, I'm going to zoom in just a bit. But I like to have those two core wires, especially whenever it's a 22 or 24 gauge. Um, I really like to have a little bit more of a core for those thinner wires. And I'm just going to bring this around and go, there's one wrap, and then two wraps. And I am not super worried right now about, sorry, just putting my pliers away, it's one less thing to get tangled up on. I'm not super worried right now about things being very tidy, because a whole lot of this is gonna get hidden by the kind of wire woven carapace that we're gonna put over it. So that's how that's looking. So now I want to do that same wrap just there on the other side. So coming around here and I'm just sewing it through, trying to make sure that as I pull the wire through it's not kinking at all. And then pressing around. So that's one wrap and now we're going to do two wraps. Now you can totally eyeball this on the next um, on the next step, but I am going to grab my ruler just because it really helps me to be more consistent. But you can, you do you. I typically very rarely use rulers in my, you know, whatever I'm crafting, but oh, cue angelic music, my uh, ruler from middle school that is an elder among its kind. It is ancient. Um, on this spider, I had done 20 millimeters for the legs, and while it's very cute, I want this next one to have longer legs. So I am going to measure out 30 millimeters, and I'm not being super accurate or anything. Wow, that's a long leg. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm testing it. <laughs> so... I've just used my flat nose pliers to do a bend, and that's going to be where his little foot is. I've seen some folks um, use like uh, seed beads and stuff for the feet, and I think that's really cute. And you can add any kind of like spice that you want to make this be your style. So we're just bringing that around, and I'm pressing quite firm uh, with my finger on the back to keep that wire in place while I bang it around and then just sewing through the middle there. And we are going to do this three more times on this side for, you know, the spider legs. And so again, measuring out to, and I measure from where, from right here, boop, you, if you can see where it's lined up on the ruler. So uh, to me, in my mind, that's where the wire is exiting the design. So it's from that exit point that I start measuring, and that just helps me, again, by having that reference point to be slightly more consistent, maybe. Um, here, I'm actually going to, I need to remember to plug that back in later, but I keep getting tangled on the camera cord, like the charger. And so just coming through, sewing that around, getting tangled on my pliers, I'm gonna move everything up. I tried having it all laid out cute. I ain't about that, I guess. Like pulling through there we go and doing that bend around there is once 
And again, do not worry about whether or not this is tidy. We can tidy everything up after the fact. We've just got to get these legs made. I like to do two stitches. You could do more, like if you used the 10 millimeter barrel um, to make the, the head here. Um, you could do two stitches in between to kind of just stabilize further, but I wouldn't recommend doing less than two because if you do just one, um, it doesn't stay as grounded, I've found. Go ahead and experiment though and, and you'll see what, just because something didn't work for me doesn't mean that it won't be exactly what you want. And just grab in there at the 30 millimeter mark, bending around, and then sewing through. and then bending around. Now I'm going to use this as an opportunity while we do this work here to give a shout out to our, for lack of a better term, studio audience who are watching while we're recording this. So hey everybody in our Kick stream. Uh, we have started streaming over on Kick every Tuesday and Wednesday from noon to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know why I just shifted over from millimeters to chicken nuggets, but here we are. And uh, I really enjoy y'all keeping me company uh, while I craft. And then we also stream on Saturdays from noon to six, but that's usually like, that's when we make the lamprey glass beads. So if you guys want to come and hang out over there, as well as here on YouTube, be sure to check us out. There will be links down in the video description. And we will still be doing our regular YouTube schedule of our Monday shop updates at noon, our Thursday tutorials at noon, and our Friday live streams from two to 7 p.m again central standard time so we have our fourth leg and i i'm on like if i were making a leg i'd do another one but we're going to do his like little mandible things and so i'm going to do one more stitch before it comes down into like mandible territory so that's how that's looking And for his mandibles, I like to grab with my flat nose pliers, with so just a couple of millimeters between where it exits and where the wire jaw starts. And I'm going to whoop, slide around. Um, I'm going to bend. You can make your mandibles however long or short as you like. This is just how I like them. And then I'm going to sew through right here. And again, I don't want that wire kinking up on me. So we're just going to pull through. And then I'm going to do two wraps. So there's our one. Uh, actually, it's looking kind of crowded, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. I can always add in more wraps later. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So, and also, this is way more wire than what I need. I'm going to use just the width of my four fingers to snip off. We can use this wire later in a different project. Okay, so now we're going to come through, do that same thing on the other side. And if you're watching this video and you've kind of got it figured out, you can feel free to jump ahead uh, in the video, but I am always going to try to capture the full experience of making this on video because I never know when something's going to go sideways um, and I know that what there's lots of people on the internet who can show you how to do something right <laughs> I want to show you what I do when I mess it up uh, and how to like kind of figure it out so coming around we did our 30 millimeters for the leg there's one wrap sewing through for the second and you can also youtube has this great feature that you can click on like the little gear icon and choose your playback speed and then you can just watch it but faster grabbing at the 30 millimeter folding it over and then coming in and pulling through And wrapping around. You could probably do whenever you've made these two loops, you could do a little bit of hammering maybe with a nylon headed hammer to work stiffen it up a little bit. Um, 
but that's only if you find it necessary. The trick that I'm going to do whenever we're done, but just to give you hope um, that if yours is all wonky, I just have like, you could use a sharpened pencil. Here I have a size 15 or a 10 millimeter, man, that's a thick 10 millimeter, anyway, um, knitting needle. And whenever all the legs are made, we'll just put that in and it shapes it back out. So again, you don't have to worry about uh, if it's getting all like wonky shaped. We'll straighten that back out in the next step. So measuring to there. Ooh, petty palps. That's good to know. So they're not mandibles, they're petty palps. I'm still going to call them mandibles probably though. So <laughs> just sewing around and then we've got one more leg and then it really starts to come together y'all. It's only just begun. There we are, the 30 millimeter on the last leg. And we're going to do that stitching around and now also you could totally just kind of stop it the you know this base spider it makes for a very cool spider and I'll show you some different variations uh, or we'll talk about a couple of different variations so there's one stitch two stitch and oh, now that one's looking a little weird ah that's because okay so right here I know I said to not worry about it getting messy but this bothers me so you can see here I kind of wrapped back on itself e so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to be really lazy and not have to completely unwrap it. So I've just loosened it a little and now I'm going to get in here with my pliers and try to like smoosh it. Smoosh it good. Did it work? Not really. Let's try again. Smoosh. Ha ha. When in doubt, smoosh it out. It worked. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. And now I'm going to measure, again, trying to do that two or three millimeters between where the wire exits and where this inner edge of my plier mouth is. And then I'm bending it around, and these are the pretty pups. And now I'm going to stitch through. And I am going to zoom back out because I, I don't want to go wandering out of frame. I actually think on YouTube you can like touch the screen if it's a touchy screen and like whoop and like make it zoom in. So the future is now. So there's one and then two. And from here, this is where, oh, and I just had an idea. Oh, heck, I might have to shoot a whole nother tutorial. <laughs> Well, I just had an idea that it's like we could totally with this extended neck right here I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to build up like a herringbone butt like I think that'd be really okay so let's see if we can do a herringbone butt I'm gonna experiment and see all right we're off the rails now people I'm putting my ruler away let's go um so with this wire we've got this one coming out the front and you can actually use this one to attach a bale like you could make like a little wrapped loop right here and have that be the bale. Um, you could snip it, you could string seed beads on it or something, like you do whatever you like. But I'm going to take which one's the bead? I was a, I kinda like this one. I think I got my beads swapped, but that's okay. And I'm just going to slide the six millimeter bead down. I think this is going to be the top. So now I'm going to thread through. And it lets the six millimeter bead sit on top. Ooh, okay. And so now oh, we're going to, how do we do this? Okay. So if I were a spider with a herringbone butt, I would come around this way. I would actually 
if I were doing this part, I would be using a thicker wire because I think that that would work out better. But so for the herringbone butt, I shall forevermore call it the hairy butt spider, um, we've wrapped around and then it's just like we're doing, oh, I'm all, I got all sweaty all of a sudden. <laughs> Let me wipe my hands on my pants. Okay. And then just bringing it around, same as any other herringbone wrap where you're just pretending like there's something else on the other side. So we've wrapped that around. And now we're coming just around the booty. And now the inclination for a lot of folks whenever they're um, doing a herringbone wrap is to come underneath. And you wanna keep all of your wire wraps on the same side because they kind of stack. It's very, very similar to if you've, ever, if you've ever woven like a melon basket or something. Now this wire's definitely a little too thin of a gauge, I think. For doing the booty like this but I just you know had the wire there anyways oh, oh. <laughs> okay okay so I'm gonna undo it because it's definitely for my taste it's too thin but that's cool I'm gonna have to experiment more with that okay and now just to demonstrate the nylon jaw pliers on para wire just like that it straightens it all the way back out and so from here though, I am just gonna wrap, like I'm making a wrapped loop around there. Now we could, if you wanted to just leave the spider like this, we could totally loop it like our wire back through the middle here, but I'm gonna be doing other things through there. So I don't wanna take up that space. Ooh, we could do like a little spiral with this if you wanted. The possibilities really are endless, you guys. And the, the, what's important is there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do this stuff. Just try it out and see what you think. And if it doesn't work the first time, but it's still in your heart, try it again. And if it doesn't work the second or fifth or tenth time, but it's still in your heart, keep trying. You'll get it. Okay. Boom. It's done. <laughs> no. Um, there's, still, there's still a ways to go uh, on the spider's glow up. So the next step is I am going to twist. I'm gonna grab probably just like the top millimeter. For a while, I was taking my round nose pliers and just cramming it through like the tip and then twisting, but it would almost cut through the wire and it was, I wasn't very pleased with the results, so I do like to just grab the tip and twist with my bent nose pliers. You could use chain nose or flat nose even too. In fact, that's a little easier on my hand. And I'm just twisting. Now I try to twist towards the center line. So I do like to twist towards the center line, and I don't always keep it I don't always keep the spider stationary. Sometimes I'll keep my pliers stationary and just do the twisting that way, but I don't want to over twist it. So sometimes I'll count like the twisting repetitions. Oftentimes I've just forgotten how many would be there. So I just twist and try to check every twist or so. Eh, close enough. You can be as meticulous or as messy as you like. There we are. I don't really feel like it's necessary to use a drill or something for this stage, but if you need to use clamps or anything like that, because you know I say that, but also my hand injury is not bothering me today. If my hand injury were really giving me like a hard time, um, y'all best bet I'd be pulling out my clamps and drills and stuff so there we go on the other side and now I'm gonna grab here and twist twist time to start twisting this away and it's just a little easier to not have to like reposition my pliers every time did I just twist that the wrong way I can't even tell no, he's upside down. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, <laughs> oh, because I don't even know anything. 
Um, I feel like I'm twisting towards the inside when this side is up, because I'm twisting that away. But then whenever it's turned, I feel like I'm... it's fine. <laughs> there we go. And then twist and twist. And again, we don't want to twist so hard that our legs are like too stiff to bend or like super work hardened. Um, cause especially with like softer copper wire like this, um, cause it, with softer copper wire like this, if you keep twisting, that wire can eventually cut through itself. And I'm going to demonstrate that. And now also, uh, in regards to wire hardness, um, when the wire that I'm using is not sold in particular as like one hardness or another, um, some wires like from Rio Grande, you'll find that they're, you know, dead soft, half hard and full hard. Uh, dead soft is very, very supple. Whoop, I'm just gonna throw my pliers and whenever you twist it into a shape, it just stays there. And so I like to use dead soft, um, but things like half hard and full hard are great for other things as well. And they polish up really, really beautifully. But uh, so if anybody was wondering what hardness of wire that I'm using, the para wire tends to fall a little between dead soft and half hard, but closer to the dead soft side. It's quite supple and easy to work with, which I like. So I'm going to demonstrate to y'all now how you know, you could do a loose twist, you could do a stiffer twist, but if you keep twisting, this wire will cut through itself. And that's not something against para wire, that's just any wire I've ever used. It takes a while. There it goes. So, just something to look out for as to uh, why we do different things the way that we do them. Okay, so from here, I'm actually going to wait to bend the legs too, because that was something that on this guy, I had bent the legs. This was our prototype piece. I had bent the legs first, and I think it's going to be easier to have them flat, like out on one like plane of existence. So, and again, if you wanted to have a bale hang this away, um, I would use this wire to like maybe attach like a little dangly bale thing like this one here. Like you could take a pre-made bale and just make a loop and then attach it with a ring or you could make the bale out of this wire. Um, but I'm actually going to be taking this guy and let's pretend like this is a bead beading cable for stringing beads on. And I'm going to make this spider into a necklace where the lampwork glass bead is the bail, because I think that's so cool. Um, and this bead that I had used is not one that I had made, so the hole on it is only like a one millimeter, um, so there's not enough space for me to do that, so I don't know what I'm going to do on this guy. Um, you could also, with the little loops that you make for the feet, you could string beading cable through there and we could actually have it to where the spider's like holding on to you know the bead like on a necklace so 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 many possibilities y'all so i'm going to make the choice to go ahead and snip this wire and i'm going to zoom in quite far for you guys so that you can hopefully see what it is that i'm doing i'm snipping not directly up against like not as close in as I could get. I'm coming out just a bit and I'm going to snip that and then I'm going to come in with my bent nose pliers and I'm just smushing that down or trying to. There we go. In that way, excellent. And you can test with your fingy to see if there's any little pokey bits, but yeah. So there we are. And I'm going to wait to do all of the primping and cuteness on the spider until the next step. So for the next step, you don't actually need like a whole ton of wire. And so I'm actually going to take my nylon gel pliers because um, it's more important to me here on this next step that my wire is very crispy and straight and clean looking than it is that it's supple. So I don't mind work hardening my wire. So I've just rung, ooh, it actually gets quite warm to the touch when I do that. 
and so this is nine inches of wire and I am going to cut four lengths of this we could do more um, but then we would be like stowing away loose ends underneath the tummy and so uh, we might address that in a future tutorial or something but for now let's stick to just four of them because that'll we'll be able to finish each wire off at like the legs Ooh, though we could totally if you wanted to do like some of them to here and then fold it up and have that be like the bale or something I don't know but if you guys follow along with any of our tutorials and want to send in pictures of your work to be featured in like future videos um, or just to just share what you're working on you can email pictures to back to earth creations at yahoo.com or you can tag us on Instagram Facebook or TikTok ticky talky and uh, on all of those platforms we're back to earth creations as well and so there is three lengths so let's go ahead and get our fourth length of wire going Whew, sizzling mm -hmm. And now we can set this off to the side and I'm going to use a full arm span so five feet of our 28 gauge you could use a thicker gauge wire but like a, a 26 or a 24 but I really like the 28 gauge it's nice and easy on my hands and I'm going to come around and ooh, before I do this part because this guy I just give him a round butt but I think I want this one to have a pointy butt. So to do that, I'm gonna come in to rough about the middle, does not have to be perfect, and I'm going to do, what is that, like a 50 degree angle? <laughs> Whatever, but it's <laughs> it's gonna fit over his butt like, like that. So you can determine whatever angle you would like, and then I'm going to come through and just duplicate that angle because I want them to be able to stack on it themselves like this and this actually opens us up for the opportunity to just attach a ring with a bail to the booty and so we can stack them together this is another place where you could use a clamp if you wanted So I'm going to do my weaving on this wire to start with, the one that's going to be closest to the butt. And so now I'm taking both the ends of my wire, I'm going to offset one by like two inches, and I want to make sure that this one, the long one, is going to be the one that they're weaving with, that we're weaving with first off. It's just a little offset, and it's really, it's not that important, but it's something that I do. And that way my wires will just finish the same length. So I found the offset center of my wire, putting the shorter end off to my left, and now I'm going to wrap like one, two, three, four, five. Let's give it a little bit of a smush. I'm going to zoom in now to try to show you all a little better. So those are our five little coils. So then there's six seven, eight, nine, and ten, and smoosh, just smooshing right along, and then, so there's eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now, I've had folks ask me um, why I don't use bobbins when I'm wire wrapping. Quite frankly, I just get very, very tangled up on them. Um, and so if bobbins work well for you, do it. If they don't work well for you, that's okay. <laughs> Just suffer with me <laughs> without the bobbins. So now I'm going to add in my next wire. And you can see on this one, the wire's exiting towards the back. And on this side, the wire's exiting towards the front. So I want to have that sandwiched in. And I am going to just go wrap one, two. 
and it does not have to be perfect right this second. We're going to be doing a lot of primping with this. And then, and I'm just going to focus on one side. So stacking this core wire in. Whoop. Just focusing, like the, these ends down here are getting all tangled and stuff on me. Don't worry about that. We're just going to get this positioned and then one, whoop, and two, bringing that together. You could do, you could do whatever weave you like, but just in case you're spoiled for choice, I'm just doing this one because I find it very easy and it's pretty. It's like the lowest effort to highest reward weave for me. So there we are. So I've just wrapped two, if I've got, if this first wire with the coiling on it is one, then two, three, and four is our most outside wire. I did two wires around one and two, two wires around one, two, and three, and then two wires around all four. And so from here, I can now start to isolate our individual wires so that they're a little fanned out, but I do want to keep them very close together up here by where we're working. So now I'm going to go one and two around just wires one, two, and three. And it, I have not smushed this yet. Like, we'll get to a point where I smush these wires. I'm not there yet because I want them all to have kind of the same tension so that they smush the same. And then oop, we're going to go two wraps around core wires one and two. So there's that. And then, ooh, that's getting a little smush. Not a squish, but just a smush. <laughs> I'm just making up words, y'all. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. So right here, where things might be a little tight, something that I like to do is to use my pliers. To I'm holding our core wires, but enough that there's still a little bit of sliding motion. And I'm just using that met flat metal edge to push that wire kind of up in there. So there's two, three, four, and five. And now I'm going to do a second repetition. I have not even paid attention to the other side at all. We'll get there in just a bit. So we did five around one, so now we're going one, and two and coming up we're going one and two and then one and two around all four and then one and two sorry our studio audience is being silly one and two and one smoosh, two, three, four, and five. Now we shall do some smooshing. I like to come in with my nylon gel pliers, or squishing rather, and I'm going to squish it, and then I'm going to squish it. You see how like flat and shiny that makes it? I just love that. And then, oop, sometimes it goopers up my fingernails because I forget that I have tools that I can use, but that's okay. So that's how that's come along. So now I'm just going to flip it, get that weaving wire off to the side, and we're going to do the same thing on this side of the butt frame. I actually need to go take care of that. I just chipped the nail, so I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, I went ahead and took care of my fingernail because I've found, I don't know if y'all are like this too, but I found for me if my nail gets a little notch in it from wire wrapping, if I leave it, then that's where the wire falls every single time and it'll wear that notch all the way in. Whereas if I take care of it, then the wire won't always be landing in the same exact place. So uh, that's why I try to just go ahead and get it taken care of. And so now on the other side, I am 
just wrapping there's one and two around both and then one and two around three and then one two around all four now I'm not I'm not being loosey-goosey like floppy on this but I also don't want to be cinching so tight that the wires are getting like crossed up over uh, each other so there's one and two and then one and two you know I was worried I put some lotion on in my break and uh, it's actually I don't know like <laughs> the weavings come in really easy now um three four and five squish um and then one two this is the point in the project where i'm always a little worried that first off i didn't hit record but i did so that's okay um and then also that i don't have enough wire <gasps> i hope i do if not i'll show y'all how to splice them in it's not the end of the world so two around all four and then one two around three and then one two and then one two three four five give the old squish smush and squish and so now that's how they're sitting kind of like them puffy like that but let's go ahead and flatten them out there we go and I have a little bit of bumpy inconsistency that's okay it'll be all right especially once we squish it together and get this like curved around the booty butt it'll be it'll be great so now we're going to position this and this wire here and the wire on the other side both of them are going to be traveling through our bead and so it's important whenever you're choosing your bead that it can fit in this one. Um, I, I needed it to be able to fit one length of 22 gauge and two lengths of the 28 gauge through it. And it still has a nice little bit of wiggle. So that's nice. It's a, always fun to have a spider to fiddle with. <laughs> and so I'm going to scooch my pliers out of the way and I'm going to get my loose ends up here. And I am just going to thread through on one side and then on the other. And let's pull them through and try to not, whoop, uh-oh. Yeah, trying to not get tangled on anything. Okay, boop, boop, there we are. It, emphasis on try, it's okay. Things are going to get tangled. That'll be all right. Yeah, I probably could have done to shape this first. So we pull the wires back off the thing we just did. And I'm going to, if we grab our wires like this and then bend, it kind of puts them offset, which I think looks really, really neat. And then I am going to try to kind of shape that around our bead just a little. You could also use like a ring mandrel or the neck of a bottle or anything like that that gives you a nice curve just to give a little bit of the shape. Or you could do it like me and have it be completely lopsided, but you know, it's art. So there we go. Wow, that actually came out super cool. So now we're going to retry this. I'm gonna do it just one at a time to see how that goes. There's one side. Because I do want, I think I want this to be happening with the legs underneath this kind of exoskeleton that we're putting on top. And then go through there. And I am paying attention here to where the wire is going to be coming from to keep that continuous. So this wire is exiting so that it can come around and look kind of, you know, continuous. And then this one is going to be exiting below. 
It's not super important, it's just something that if it is important to you, now would be the time to be keeping an eye on that. And I am trying to keep a little kink from happening, and it really, really wants to, so I'm going to stick my finger in there and then pull down. And do you see how that keeps it from twisting up? Ah, there we go. You know, I'm going to try to pull, not like super duper tight. Uh, I probably could have had this be a little closer up on the bead if I had done the crossover before I did those five rotations. But I don't mind the extra space being there. Pardon my chair creaking. And so I'm just going to come through, make sure that my wires are ready for me. And I'm going to go around two. Yeah, I don't want to pull too hard on the wires to make sure everything's, you know, doing well. But we also want it to be nice and tight. So there's one, two, around two. Oh, and now there's all these legs to get tangled on. One, two, around three, and then, oof. Okay, one, two, around all four. And then let's go one and two, and then one and two, and then one. Now, hey, why are you being like that? Sometimes I just have a difficult time fitting that last wire in. So I wonder if squishing it and then smushing it boop, and then trying to cram that wire in. Oh, that worked much nicer. Okay, so there's two, three, four, and so now we shouldn't have to worry about that wire swooshing, like, uh, sliding around too much. And we can pull it nice and tight on this side. And let's get that same weaving pattern repeated. All right, Spitter. I'm going to bend its legs down just to get them a little out of the way. Just like that. No. Going around. I'm actually going to scooch these ones over just the ends out of the way as well. And I know it's. Oh, that's much easier too, just flipping it over. Letting the spider kind of fall out of the way. So there's one, two around both. Wires one and two, one, two, and see this is what I was talking about earlier where I'm squeezing a little too tight so it's bunching up on itself. Let's get that wire off to the side if it's not the one I'm weaving with. There's one and two around three, one and two around all four. Smush, 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 and then coming back down. But do you see what I mean? That like how this is a very much a low effort. Like it could just be that I've done this weave so much for so many years that it's like muscle memory. But like there's no like having to get in between every single one. And it's just this one seems really nice and straightforward. But I absolutely love how it ends up looking. So there's two around three. And then one, two, around just the two. And then let's see about, we're going to give it that smush. The old squish and smush. So there's that. Smush it down. Boom, boom, do, 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 do. And then getting that in there for one, two, three, 
four, and five rotations. Yeah, I kind of wish I had done it sooner, like a little closer up on the butt. Just because, and I made that same, not mistake, but just that same design that I was like, eh, um, for like right there. So what I'm going to do is I might try to give it a little bit more space. Nah, we can just smush it a bunch. <laughs> so, let's see, is it ready for us to start? crossing or do I need to do one more repetition? I think one more repetition on each side is going to be a good idea. And then let's go one, two. More of the same. <laughs> but that's the fun of it though. We're getting a whole lot of practice. One, Two, without having to weave you know two feet worth of something to make a pendant or like I feel like this is a really nice um, just a nice little bit of weaving one two though it is in close quarters as far as having all these wires here together how many did I just do I can't see Yep, that's just the one. I like to use, uh, my eyesight is not what it once was, so I use my camera a lot as like kind of a stand-in for a magnifying glass. Two, three, and I say camera, but it's just my cell phone. Four and five. There we are. Let's go ahead and give it the old squish. Oop. I just love how it flattens it out. And I'm going to move that wire again off to the side so it's out of my way. And then I'm going to split these wires down by the tips just a little more. There we go. And then one, two, two. Every time I'm counting, I just know that somewhere, somehow, I've messed up my friend Yvette's counting on her crochet stitches. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry to anybody who's crocheting while watching this. <laughs> One, two, well that cackle gave me away. Apparently I'm not that sorry, but... <laughs> And now we're going to go one, two, and I'm just cutting it between the wires and then around the wires. Three, four, and oftentimes I'll use my finger here on the back to just hold the wire to make sure it lands more or less where I want it to. And then squish on both sides and smush. I'm so sorry y'all. I use squish and smush so interchangeably. It's just very technical terminology. Um, so we're just bending that around. Ooh, ooh, look at that butt. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love it. I do wish I kind of tightened that up just a little bit more. Sorry, I'm getting excited about this. Like the other night before bed, I did like scribbled ramblings and like, I was like, oh, I think I can do it. Like, but I'm excited. I'm excited that this is coming out how it is. So now we are going to split very gently these two wires out to the side and these two wires out to the side just to get them kind of out of our peripheral. And now I'm going to do, I call it a two five beat. I'm doing two wires around two and then five around one. And I'm going to repeat that because that's how we're going to establish the back legs, um, the wires that are going to be the back legs. So again, I'm letting the spider just drop off out of the way so I can just hold my project. And then we're going to go one, two. This lotion's really good, but it's making wire wrapping difficult. Um, two, 
three, four, and five. So that's how that's looking. Let me zoom in, maybe. I'm going to risk zooming in for y'all. I am very bad about wandering out of frame. And I, I do not mean to, but I get really absorbed in what I'm doing and just wander off. So there's one and two. And then one, two, three. Nope, I wrapped around both there. Three. Four and five. And then we'll squish that down. Now I'm gonna zoom back out because this is <laughs> I don't trust myself to not wander out of frame. There's one, two. Oh, I have no idea how many repetitions of this I'm gonna do though. So I'm gonna stop at three once I get done with this repetition of five. So there's two, three, four, and five. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Because the idea is, is these two wires here will be bending across and then getting bent to travel down each of the legs. So yeah, we've done three repetitions on one side. Let's go ahead and do three repetitions on the other of this pattern. So we had finished off on the five. So we're going to go one, two. One, and I'm going to bend these ones just a little down and out of the way. Two, three, four, and five. One, two. This is reminding me, I don't know, just the shape of it is reminding me of my friend Itsy Bitsy. Um, she makes these wire wrapped face huggers that are just the coolest. But just the shape of that was like, it looks like the kind of floppy face hugger. <laughs> two. One, two, three, four, and five. So there's two repetitions, then one, two, and I do like to finish them on the repetition of five, just because it grounds the wire out. I don't have to worry about, you know, these two wires splitting apart from, you know, movement and stuff. Two, three, four, and five. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's try it, because this is going to stabilize a whole lot of what's going on here. <sighs> okay. So we're going to move that kind of off to the side, and we're going to move this kind of off to the side, and... Just bending gently that away and I guess this one's gonna be the one that's on top because that's where it's sitting so then I'm going to bend this one whenever I make a bend I try to grab it in the same spot on the other side so I've grabbed here where that last kind of sunshine ray wrap happened okay and now I'm gonna tighten that down just a little more Okay, I'm digging that. There's a little bit more space around the booty. So I'm gonna smush that in. I'd be careful if I were using like a turquoise or something, like a softer bead, um, like a large malachite would look really cool. But when it comes to a uh, metal versus stone, sometimes the softer stones, like a really big chunk of amber would be gorgeous here, but I would be concerned about the wire scratching the stone. With the glass, I'm not worried about it, but uh, with whatever you're working with, it's something to kind of keep in mind. So originally, I thought I was going to do like a crisscross here in this area on the back, but with this one, I didn't give it enough of a neck 
So I ended up having to do the cross underneath and that seemed to work out pretty well. But let's try this one to the original vision and uh, I'm gonna try to, okay, do like a little bit of a woven thing where, mm, now that's kind of neat, at least on this side. And then how would I do, I just forgot how to weave. Um, so this one would come like nya over it. Don't know till you try. And then this one would come like nya over that way, right? Yeah, okay. Ooh, oh I like it. Oh, I like it a bunch. Oh, except for now it's gonna be super tricky to get in there and weave on boop, just that one section. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and it does cover a fair bit of the back of the spider. Okay, well maybe if we gave it like a much longer neck next time, but now we've tried it and we know. And I was gonna need to bend the heck out of those parts anyways, so I'm just going to bend these guys quite dramatically off to the side. And it's okay if they get a little bent up weird because they're gonna be on the tummy and we're gonna be bending up, bending them up weird even more. So, well, that fixes the problem with needing to do a couple more repetitions of the weave. So that's what we've got going on so far. And I'm going to go one and two. Let's get a little bit of space there. And now five around the one. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And this is where this split is going to happen. So I'm gonna bend that off even more. So this wire here, oh, good thing too, because I've only got like a little bit, a little bit of the wire left. Um, I want to make sure that the body is centered up because this is where things are going to start getting locked down. And I'm just going to start wrapping around. Now, and I had tried to decide if I wanted the yeah, I think I do like the silver on top of the legs. So I'm just using the twist of the leg itself to kind of hold the wire in little increments. And I'm just lashing it down. You could do a weaving pattern if you want. Okay, and I want to snip my wire at a little bit of an angle right before it starts to be in the foot. So like right there is where I'm trimming. And you can file that if it's in your heart to do so. I'm not going to because I'm lazy um, and also I like it being pointy. But I'm wrapping a little more densely as we come to the tip and then I'm just gonna wrap one two, three, probably could have let it be a little longer now that I'm looking at it, but that's okay. Um, I've lost count, so I'm just wrapping. And now I'm gonna bind it off in his little foot. So we're just gonna stitch through right there. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now I like to trim the wire on the feet. I'm going to zoom in for this one. I like to trim the wire right as it is exiting his little foot. In that way the snipped part 
like you'd have to get into that loop for it to be snaggy. And so I'm just coming in and doing a little bit of a smush to make sure that there's no pokey bit. But yeah, uh, I would have liked to have trimmed the wire maybe like four millimeters longer. I guess I was a little off center, but it's okay. I'm just, that's set the tone for where I'm going to trim the wires the whole rest of the way around. So now I'm going to come around to this side. And again, we're going to bend these guys quite a ways off out of the way. Because they're, they're going to be what comes under the tummy and then becomes like the... Uh, the front legs. And now, what did we do? We just had the two and the five, and then we started wrapping. Sure. Looks good. So now I'm just going to start wrapping around. And I'm not super worried about counting stitches or anything like that. Again, I'm just letting the segmentation of that twist hold the wire wherever it lands. You know, he could just have one short leg, too. Nah, we'll do it the same. Okay. There's that one. And then just wrapping a little more tightly around the tip here, like more concentrated wrapping. And now we're going to sew through the tip, the little loop of his foot. So there's one, there's two, and three. Whoop, going through four. It's just like a whip stitch with needle and thread. And Maybe. There we go. Five. <laughs> and I'm going to snip that again, right where it's exiting out of the foot. And just smushing that down. And there's two out of four legs. Alrighty, so I'm taking a look here because I always try to, you know... Symmetry does not come naturally to me, so I like to check myself. And I'm going to come in here with my pliers and kind of work this around so that the copper of the under spider, like the inner skeleton, um, and the silver of the exoskeleton are oriented the same. So hopefully, yeah, that's nice. I like that. So now I'm going to take some more of our 28 gauge and I'm going to just another five feet. That's probably way more than what we need, but I like having a lot to hold on to. That way my hand isn't cramping up. And I am going to coil really close to the tail here. I'm going to zoom in just a bit for you guys. Hopefully that'll work. And one, two, three, four, five, smush. And that makes it six. And I am counting here to try to be symmetrical because I'm gonna shoot for like 10 rotations. So it's six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that I can make sure to try to match that on the other side. So I've smushed that on down. And this is gonna come around. Ooh, that's actually, yeah, we can make that work. I'm gonna take my flat nose pliers. I'm gonna get that in there right up against those coils, making sure I have enough of the wire in my jaws that it's not going to slip and I'm going to bend. And that way this travels out along the same path as the leg. And from here, I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap just doing that lashing wrap and again you could totally do a weave here I just like the way this looks like it almost makes it look um, kind of sectioned off like the little articulated knuckles of the spider leg or something and then I'm gonna come in and 
snip. Ooh, it's flying. And on your spider, the legs will probably be more even or, you know, however. But again, I'm not super worried about it because the spider's legs are going to be positioned in a way that they're not going to be perfectly evident. And now wrapping a little more tightly there just around the tip and then one two and now we're going to oh my god there's so much on here okay <laughs> this is probably why I shouldn't have done a full arm span so I'm gonna snip so I probably only needed like 10 inches 10 to 12 inches of wire um, and that's just gonna make it a little easier for us to sew through the little tip of his footsie so there's one little footy tooties, his little spitter beans. Two. Three. Four. And five. Let me see if I can't get this camera repositioned a little better. Alrighty, so I think that might be a little better. So yeah, we have our five wraps around, and I'm going to snip it right where it's coming out of his little foot, and then just using my pliers to try to pinch that tip, testing with my finger, because it sees better than my eyes sometimes, especially on these smaller details, just to make sure there's no little pokey bits. And now we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So I am gonna measure this specifically this time. Here's 12 inches. And we're gonna do those 10 coils. One, two, three, four, five, and smush. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's about eight. So we'll hold it, nine, 10. And I wanna smush that end down because again, no pokey bits. It's just, it's it's a lot easier to smush it now than to try to go in and fix a pokey bit later. So again, smushing that in nice and tight into the rest of the weaving. And then using my flat nose pliers to squish it on up. And then bending so that it is right in line with the leg. The bend looked a lot nicer on the other side, so I'm going to try to fiddle with this and see if there's not something... There we go. <clears throat> Love it. And so wrap, 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 and wrap. But yeah, that's kind of what I mean whenever I say letting the twist of the wire set the spacing for the this coiling that we're doing, the very, very loose coiling, but still. And now let's go ahead and do that snip. And then I'm gonna wrap a little more densely here at the tip. And you, gosh, if we were doing silver and bare copper wire on this, I think bald ends that are like hammered would look so cool. Like, ah, I wanna get into metal smithing so much but it is scary. But the obstacle is the way. If it scares me, but it's still in my heart that I wanna to try to do it, then I have to, have to. Two, three, four, and five little wraps. And again, if your spider starts getting kinky, just put your, Jesus, I can't say that. Um, so then once we've done our five little wraps, but yeah, if the kink starts happening, you can just use your finger to obstruct that twist and then you can bring it down. Oops. And we're gonna snip. And then we're gonna smush. There we go. Yay! 
baby. And he's coming right along, y'all. Okay, and that was only like about six inches of scrap. But I still, I like having enough that I can hold on to. So now we get to get into the fun part. Ooh, that's a little tricky. But we've done that fold there. I'm now just going to push it across to the bottom. Ah, and see, I don't like how it did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this right here with my pliers. And then I'm going to bend one wire at a time. No, I'm not. I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to bend it from underneath like that. Am I even in frame? Yes, okay. And like that. And then I'm going to use my thumb to kind of bend off this away. Because I think I like that better than it just crisscrossing. Okay. So I'm going to hold on this spot right here where that weaving is. I'm going to hold that flat. E maybe. I'm going to try. And then just one wire coming in and then coming in. Did that? No, that's just weird. Okay, it's fine. We'll figure it out, you guys. We're just making it up anyways. The rules are made up, the points don't matter. Okay, so that's how that fold is coming across. And then I'm gonna get in there and just using my thumb to guide it, bend it around and then bending that around as well. Oh, oh, that's so cool and I love it. I like that a lot better than doing the crisscross because the crisscross looks a little messy to me. <gasps> Y'all, we're gonna have to do some coiling. Okay, I'm gonna heckins my wire. And so now I'm gonna take the, ouch, <laughs> it bit me. Um. One, two, three, four, five, because it's a nice round number. And then weaving our tail in for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just going to smush the rest of that in anyhow. So what I, I'm going to snip it actually. There we go. So we've just gotten a little bit coiled on there. <clears throat> and in my excitement, I made it a little gnarly. So I'm just gonna use my pliers to tighten that down. And it's just cinching. It's just twisting. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a skill worth, worth grinding out. And uh, that's gonna be a little I don't want there to be copper on one side, but not on the other. So I'm actually going to move this up just to where it's hidden under the belly. But the reason why I've done those 10 coils, I'm going to zoom in for you. The reason why I've done those 10 coils is so that I can start generating tension between these two wires. So I'm going to pull that in. See how that's done? So there's two. And then I'm going to wrap around all four using my thumbnail to just keep everything kind of like in place. There's one and two around all four and then one and two just around those two. So that's how that is looking. And I'm going to show our studio audience real quick if they want to see. how that's going and then I think that's it I'm gonna start weaving around just this one three four five to get us to where <clears throat> six seven eight, nine, ten. Yes! Because my goal is, is to weave that until it gets kind of in line 
to where this is here and I'm gonna kind of bend it up and through in between those little spider legs and then pressing with my thumbnail we could also do this with our pliers I am going to bend around so now the wire is kind of positioned there on top and we are going to just do that same lashing as what we were doing before there we go one because now it's changed to where the silver is going to be forward more forward on the uh Why am I backwards? Um, sorry, I've just noticed again for the sake of symmetry, I really like how this leg is looking. And so I think I'm gonna do the opposite of what I had done earlier, where we were taking this and kind of trying to make it be the silver on the front. I think I prefer it with the silver on the back. So I'm just gonna take it around and just kind of shape it that way. And I'm gonna let the silver be on the back side. Need a booty side. Bending that around. And again, just letting those wires nestle into the little valley that's made in between the twists of the original leg. And whenever we get close, but not too close, I like to come in and snip. Woo! Caught it. And then right when it's on like that last segment is where I like to weave it a little um, or do the coiling a little tighter. And then a few coils around just the leg before we start sewing through the tip. And then sewing, there's one. <clears throat> Oop, missed it. Two. I'm going to zoom back out because, again, don't want to wander out of frame. I've lost count. Uh, how many is that? I think that's two. Three. Four. And five before we flip it over do a little snip like that set our wire off to the side so I don't lose it and Woo! oh okay oh my god oh my gosh oh my gosh okay ah! <laughs> so let's do that well, we can't quite do the same thing because we've already joined the center together. So what I'm going to do is here towards the tip of this leg, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, smush. You know what? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not being too wasteful if I just snip the tail off because I am saving it to melt down later because one day, one day, y'all, I will be a metalsmith. I'll be king of the pirates. There we go. And sliding that down. And that hasn't quite gotten us. Ah, yeah, that got us close enough. So again, I went to mirror image on the other side. So it's going to come around the tummy to there. And then I'm going to bend forward this away, and then I am going to bend sideways that away. And that way we have that little shaped bend that's going to hopefully let us do, let us match the other side. And there's one. Is this going to go? Yeah, it's going to go on the, the booty side, that's right, of the leg. And we're just going to do those same lashings 
around the legs. And before we get to the end, close to the tip but not too close, I'm going to go ahead and do the cut so that we can finish. Whoop, I feel like I'm wandering all over the place, sorry. I'm just so excited we're fixing to do the last two legs. One, two, I did this one shorter than the others, oh well. Um, <laughs> And then I'm going to sew through right here. So there's one, two, smushing it down as we go, three, four, and And now we're going to snip that, same as the others. If you don't get it right on the first leg, you might buy the seventh. <laughs> but also, I feel like each of mine have come out just a little different, and that, that is perfectly okay. So let's take a break to stretch our hands, and then I'll meet you guys right back here for another leg. Okay, so for the next leg, I'm going to do that same thing where we bend it kind of up and through between the legs. I'm right here, Ember. What's up, kitty? Hmm? I think she caught a cricket. Um, sorry. And now we're gonna do that same thing where we take the wire and we bend it forward. Oops. Like that. And then I'm gonna come in and grab it this way and I'm gonna bend it like that. I just feel like it gives me a sharper, more controlled result to do it that way. And then, so what did we do? Heck, okay. Bent it this way, and then bent it this way. Yes, love it, absolutely love it. Eee! Ooh. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Um, <laughs> so we have our 28 gauge wire. I'm going to do probably like 20 coils. That sounds pretty good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And squish. And I am going to go ahead and just trim that little excess end off. Just because my hands are getting tired, y'all. And it's just a little easier, and so I'll take it where I can get it. I'm going to smush that end down. Slide this in. Uh-oh. I guess I should have done this before I did the bend. Uh-oh. Oh, it's okay. I just pull it out a bit, and that makes for space. Excellent. And wrapping around. So there's one. I feel like I'm wrapping backwards. It's because I am. Okay. Two. I'm going to zoom in just a smidge. Three. Four. I'm going to go ahead and snip it. Did that seriously just happen? It is okay. <laughs> that's fine. I'll find it. Probably in my foot later, but that's okay. Okay, and then wrapping one, two, whoop. There we go. And then one, two, around just the end there. And oops. Sewing through right there like that. One, two, three. 
I'm so excited that we only have one more leg left. E <laughs> four and five for our last one. There we go. Giving it that old smush and then snip. Oh my goodness. I'm so pleased, y'all, with how this is coming along. All right, last one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, smush, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, smush, nineteen, twenty. There we go. Giving it the old squish and smush. There we go. Sliding that down. Bending that out just a little to make space to get that slid down the rest of the way. <clears throat> and then just doing that wrap. Same as what we did the other seven legs. There we go. And now let's go ahead and give it that snip. And I wove this one a little more densely down the tip of the leg just because I felt like it. So there's one. Three, four, and five. Oh my goodness. Y'all, this next step is where it really starts to come together. And I am so, so excited. I hope I don't ruin it, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to shape his little knot mandibles down just a bit. Oh no, one's longer than the other. <laughs> That's all right. And I want the shape of the legs. I'm going to kind of bend that back just a little and I'm going to bend this one back just a little and then I'm gonna kind of bend down and back so again down and then back you see what I mean how it's not that big of a deal that the legs weren't like perfectly exactly the same and then bending it back and down so bending it back and down maybe is that correct I don't know sure looks good <laughs> and then for these front legs I like bending them in and down so bending in with my fingers first just to get that bend to happen and then down with my flat nose pliers and I like to kind of oh you could give it those like floppy spider legs I kind of prefer it not floppy spider legs it's a little too creepy um <laughs> there we go on that one and then there we go so I don't bend all the legs on the same line and looking at like reference images would be you know it's always a good idea just to get an idea of you know if you don't feel confident and just going for it check out some reference images if you're not you know too much into you're too much against looking at pictures of spiders um but I try to do the bends in the like the, the knee in a little bit of like a arc I like the way that that looks personally 
So there is our little spitter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this strung up on a necklace and I'm going to be doing that on our kick uh, live stream. And so I'll show you guys the end result here in the video, but it just, I'm very, very slow at bead stringing because I have to like touch all of my beads and talk to them and see how they're doing uh, before I pick them out and string them. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to thread it through the booty, but I think what I'm going to do y'all like I think I've just decided, I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to turn these front two feet to be like turned this way. That way I can thread a wire through. So pretend with me for a moment that this is beading cable. And I'm going to have it come through here. And so that's going to be how our spider sits on the necklace. Now you could do yours however you like, but that's just how I'm going to do this one because I love the shape, the little booty. But uh, but yeah, so I will meet you guys back here to show you how we strung it up. Hey guys, thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me during this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you'd like to send us pictures of what you've made. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I'm supposed to show you. This is how we strung it up in the kick live stream. We used, she's Arachne, the weaver of dreams. And so the little bit of purple there and in between the amber red agate and citrine beads, and that's genuine Baltic amber and stuff. But um, this piece as well as these guys and whatever else I can get made in the in-between will be available for sale up on our shop, factorofcreations.com. Uh, links down in the video description and quite potentially uh, for sale like auction or we've got I gotta focus um, it's been a really wonderful day but like a long day so my brain my brain cells are like can we have dinner and go to bed please and I'm like not yet we gotta keep working this coming Friday which if you're watching this the day that the video released it's tomorrow and if you're in the future it is in the past I'm sorry you missed it um but Friday Friday, October 27th, 2023, we are having a craft along a -thon where you can go and pick out what bead you would like wrapped into a little spitter butt for, well, much more like um, a kind of simpler style of spider wrap. But I'm really excited about it. I look forward to seeing y'all there. If you missed out and you want to participate in future events, you can sign up for our free newsletter, at, again, at backtoearthcreations.com. And we will keep you guys filled in with what's new. We send out emails every Monday, Thursday, and Friday. So we don't get too spammy, but we do kind of juggle a lot and have a lot of plates spinning. So we keep you up to date about what's going on. And that way you don't have to rely on YouTube for notifications. But uh, you can also see our full event schedule there at the bottom of our website as well so you can see where all of our kick streamings happening and any vending events or any camp along events or anything like that uh, will be there on that calendar so if y'all have any questions or anything oh if you follow along with our tutorials you can send us pictures to back truth creations at yahoo.com i was supposed to say that and then if you have any questions comments or ideas leave them down below i do love hearing from you guys and I'll see y'all next time. So I am going to be trying to do an edit of this down to like 10 minutes. I don't know if that's possible. And then a 60 second version as well. But that's just for the ticky talky and stuff. So, um, but this, this was a doozy of a project. But I had a whole lot of fun. And I'm really, really pleased with how she came out. But uh, I especially love how she came through holding on. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, how she's holding on to the wire with her hang in there. Oh, but a spider. Um, so I'll see y'all next time. And until then, thank you and happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>